Welcome to Wreck Rock. It's five hours north of Brisbane. We drove up last night. We're camping here in the Deep Water National Park and this campground is called Wreck Rock. This whole coastline along here is famous for turtles laying their nests and then the little turtles hatching on the beach. So we're gonna go and check that out a little bit later on. We're gonna show you around Bundaberg, the distillery. We're gonna make our way up north through 1770 and then finish our travel in Gladstone. So hang around and come on this Fair Nickham adventure with us, Southern Gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. Main things you should do when you're out for driving in soft sand lower your tire pressure down if it's really soft sand you will probably even go down to 20 or 18. if you get bogged still let them down more that will be able to help you get out it just goes to show you if you've got ground clearance let your tires down to 25 20 psi you should be able to get up most soft sand or get through any soft sand. Uh, so I've got high four-wheel drive or low four-wheel drive and I haven't had to put it in either as yet. As yet. Okay, bush camping with the Thomases. Bacon and eggs. Camp. Bacon and pancakes. Nick's little specialty. <laughs> You've got to have the streaky thing. And what's your mix you've got, you got there, Nick? Basic flour and milk and an egg. That's it. That's it. Here we go, Ashley. Pouring maple syrup. Check out that breakfast of champions. Is it tasty? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't recording, you do it again. <laughs> no. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Oh, that's good. Don't mess with an Italian woman, oh. Goanna. No, Goanna's near my hand. I'm going to go and grab him no, and put him. One of the things while camping out in the deep water national park, you've got to make sure food's not laying around your tent. You get a lot of goannas, or they call them, some call them bung arrows, but they come in and they'll open up your bags and start eating the food that's in there. One was just in the camp and I just started trying to get some shot of him and he just took off up this tree here. You can see him, it's gone right up there. Well, I'm going to show you our little setup. We're camping in a swag. So it's four wheel drive access a lot of around here. So I've got the four wheel drive. 
got my angle just there, little fridge, and uh, some plenty of fresh water. Solar panels on the roof, keeping my battery charged so the car battery doesn't go flat. I've got dual batteries going. And here is our camp. Boab double swag. We just chuck that down on a bit of floor matting and a little gazebo. The gazebo just to keep the sun off the swag and uh, if it does rain, just water off the swag even though the swag's waterproof. So yeah, that's us, that's our little setup. Now to go and check out this place. We're at Deepwater National Park and we're going to check out turtles that are coming up at this time of the year, laying their eggs and hatching. Not sure if we're going to see any tonight because you're supposed to go down to the beach that's coming up to high tide, but as that's actually going to be like at three in the morning. <laughs> Ain't getting up at three. So, so we're just going to try our luck and see if we can see the odd turtle. But you know what we will see is this. Look, monkeys out here. <laughs> we found a turtle. She's a massive loggerhead turtle. She's laying a nest right now. It's been amazing to see her dig down so deep. Apparently they dig about 65 centimetres under the surface of the ground. A little chamber and then they go into a trance and they lay their eggs in there. And they do this every couple of weeks, a few times throughout the season. Come and check it out. down the beach with the Turtle Research Centre here at Rec Rock. Bev and Nev, a couple that come up every year, they've been coming up since 1977, researching the turtles. It's just amazing. We've seen our first turtle laying eggs up here at Rag Rock. It's a beautiful experience to be honest. You see that mama turtle laying her babies in the sand dunes. But we're definitely going to try again tomorrow night and see if we can see some more. But that was pretty cool. Last night we saw a beautiful loggerhead turtle laying her eggs on the beach. You will have seen that. We've come down today to ask Nev about her because she had a tag on her. He's got information about how long she's been coming to this beach, how old she is. This is some of the information here, isn't it? Yes. Nev, that... Yep. So this is her, K79815. And she was first tagged back in 2006. Yeah, right here. And, and just about to the day. Wow, yeah, <laughs> true. So is this sort of a normal pattern that you see with loggerheads that, um, this sort of pattern of... It, there's nothing dates? normal, there's no normal pattern, but it's a typical pattern right. that, uh, that we would see with, with the loggerheads that they're coming back um, at intervals of four or five years. Right. Um, so it's not every year they come back? No, yeah. no. As yeah. we've said, they, they need, they, 
they expend a, a great deal of energy to yeah. do that migration and so it yeah. takes them sometimes years to, to build up their bodies. So speaking of her body, since 2006 she's only grown 3.3 centimetres so obviously she was pretty much like fully grown when yes. you first tagged her. Yep. Yep. So how long does it take the like sort of full size? I know obviously yep. maybe a little bit of growth but yep. um, like they, they'll, they'll reach maturity at about between 20 and 25 years right. and um, and from then they, they'll only grow 10 centimeters overall for the right. next 20 or 30 years right. but um, but it takes them takes them 20 25 years to reach that size that mature size and that's when their breeding the cycle starts breed. yeah right so she was at least 40 years old well we're assuming that um, that that when we tagged her, that was her first time that she'd nested. That yeah. was her first season. She only came in once that season. So right. we're assuming that was her first. And um, and say she was 20 or 25 years old then, we're saying she's probably she's 40, at least yeah. 40 years at old least 40 now. 40 years old. Yep. And so how long do they breed for? Well, that's it's that's an unknown, unknown quantity because um, mm. we've, we've got records of turtles that have been in their breeding cycle for 50 years, mm -hmm. um, we don't know when it's going to end mm -hmm. because um, it may pop up again after after 10 years because that's the still time yeah, to and we still wait to see. So um, we really don't know um, how long their breeding cycle is going to last for. Fair enough. Well, there you go. It's nice to know a little bit of information about our girl that we saw on the beach last night. Thanks very much for that, Ned. That's good. Well, we're heading into Bundaberg for the day. Bundaberg is on the Burnett River and it's about an hour south of the Deepwater National Park where we're camped. Well, there's lots of things to see and do here in Bundy, but our first stop after lunch will be the Kalki Moon Gin Distillery. Do you think I use the same? advertising Kalki Moon have claimed that they're the best gin in the world for under $50. Although it's nice, I would dispute that because for me still the best gin is made in Goa. It's called Stranger and Sons and for about 20 bucks Australian it's hands down the best gin I've ever tasted. There are words I've said the way down on my shoulders Well, we've made it to the Bundaberg Rum Distillery. It is iconic here in Australia, is the Bundy Rum. In fact, actually 96% of sales of Bundaberg Rum is sold here in Australia. The other 3% is to New Zealand and 1% to the rest of the world. So, it shows you how much Australians love the Bundaberg Rum. When you come to Bundaberg, do the tour, you'll go through all the warehouse, you'll see all the vats, and I'll give you all the information you need on, and show you how the process is made. Well, let's go and check out the museum. Something tells me I could fall in love with you. Something tells me I could fall in love with you. Something tells me I could fall in love. now 
132 years old, the distillery, since it was established. Uh, they actually have an anniversary edition rum, 125 year old, with a lot of money to be able to get one. But here in the museum, this was one of the old vat rooms, and they've turned it into a museum. When you go through, it gives you the whole process of the history of the distillery, how the rum is made, and some of the fires that took place and burnt the distillery down. But here is probably famous parts of the museum with all the rum that they've produced in their history. And check out some of the really old bottles. Something tells me I could fall in love with you. Something tells We've just done the tour and now afterwards it comes with two free drinks. So I'm gonna try the small batch reserve. You can see it's a lot lighter. And the other one is the top shelf Solera. It's won two back-to-back -back gold medals for the best rum in the world. <laughs> so start off with the reserve. Very smooth. You can taste the honey out of that. It's good. Now this one is the <coughs> Solera, best rum in the world. So, it smells amazing. It smells really toffee. Wow. You can see why that Solera is a gold medal winner. That is beautiful. Well, in the next episode of our Central Queensland road trip, we'll make our way up to Agnes Waters and the beautiful 1770. Well, if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and give us a like or drop us a comment.